Dear friends in Christ, please join me in prayer. We pray. Lord Jesus, we give thanks to you for just dwelling with us each and every day, for being our guide and being our stay, that no matter what trials and tribulations we face in this life, that you are there. No matter what turbulence blows through, that we can hold, that you hold steadfast to us. Help us ever to hold steadfast to your words and hold to your promises, knowing that our hope is secure in you. And may your grace, mercy, and peace be with us now and always. Amen. Have you ever had one of those moments where all you could say is, wow. A moment where you were just speechless. You were overwhelmed by everything that was around you, by the things that were happening in your life. A moment where just there was no words to describe the emotions you felt. I imagine you have. I imagine that in your life that you can think of many times where this has happened. Maybe it's overlooking the beauty of God's creation, the mountains and the trees, the the rocks. Maybe it's when you found out that the Lord intended for you to marry your spouse. And you realize right then and there, wow, this is the person God has prepared in advance for me. Maybe it's when you heard your child cry for the very first time. Wow. As he or she lay in your arms. Maybe it's the diagnosis that you received. You didn't have cancer. The cancer was taken from your body, that it was eradicated. Wow. Talk about the miracles that God does. The wow of a near miss. Just missing a car accident, being safe. Maybe it's simply as, as simple as a day-to-day life and seeing the bright sunshine or hearing a worship song or hearing a prayer and a piece of scripture that just speaks to your heart. We all have these times where we have these wow moments. These times where we just cannot speak but we're overwhelmed. And I imagine for Elijah that must have been for him when he was on top of Mount Carmel. Now, Mount Carmel happened a chapter before our reading for today, but back in Mount Carmel, he was, well, probably at first overwhelmed because he stood against over 400 prophets of Baal. It was a showdown. It was going to be whose God is greater, is Baal or is the true God. And as you probably know, the day ended with the altar being swept up by fire after it had been drenched. Now, I don't think that was the entire wow right there yet. I think it's yet to come. Even as the people shouted, He is Lord, He is God. I don't think yet, 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 because after that came the shedding of blood, but I still don't think that's the wow. It was right after that. It was not where God proved that He was Lord over these other lords, these Baal or Asherah. It's not uh, this, that He was Lord over people. It's Lord of creation. Because right after that, after a three-year drought in the land of Israel, it started to rain. And not just any rain. The, the Hebrew is very specific. It says it was a great rain, a Geshem Gadol. It was a rain that was violent and it was cleansing rain. It was a rain that showed that God was in control. And I think that at that moment, Elijah must have said, wow, and been overwhelmed by the power of God. We stand in those moments when we're overwhelmed by the power of God, in those moments where we realize how small we are compared to the greatness of our God. And then we have a text like today, though, a polar opposite. We jump into 1 Kings chapter 19, just one chapter later, the way it sounds, less than a day later. And things are going rough. Elijah suddenly, after those wow moments, after seeing the power and glory of God, well, he is at the depths of despair. He even goes so far as to say, I'm done. Life is done. I want to die. He went out into the desert, sat down under the broom tree, hoping that he would, going to sleep and hoping he would never wake up again. He was done for. See, after three years, He was exhausted. He wanted a reprieve. Three years of drought, he was being pursued and chased by by Jezebel and by Ahab. They wanted his life, and he was tired of running. He had seen the power of God, but he just felt like things were too overwhelming. He felt like things were never going to change. So instead of boldly proclaiming, boldly confessing, He crawled off into the desert to die. 
went up into that cave away from everyone else, feeling alone. Now Elijah, he was in the depths of despair at this point. But sadly, I think some of you, whether it's because you felt alone or not, can relate to what Elijah was going through. Sadly, I think some of you here have known that feeling more than once in your life. That feeling of despair that you just cannot go on. Or that feeling that why won't the Lord give you some reprieve? Hold back just a little bit. Doesn't it say in 1 Corinthians that He'll never give us more than we can bear? Maybe you've not run for your life, but I'm sure you've felt those pains, those, those times where maybe you couldn't even express those words to God. Maybe you couldn't even express those questions of why. Maybe it was... Maybe it's the loss of a job or loss of income and not being able to take care of your family anymore. You were faithfully doing what you were supposed to do, loving your family, caring for them. Maybe it's the loss of a loved one, that pain of feeling and knowing that we might not see them for a long time again. Maybe it's the pain that you felt by the bitter betrayal of a friend, someone who turned their back on you, who you loved and respected you think about it, all of you have these experiences, these painful experiences in your life, these painful losses, these times where it feels like you're all alone, where it feels like no one hears you, and most of all, it feels as though God doesn't hear you. Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever felt that God just didn't hear you, that he didn't give you the reprieve you needed? that you just could not face the next day. Sadly, most everyone here has felt that way. Sadly, most everyone here has experienced that, and if, we, if you haven't yet, then you are blessed. But we all go through those times of our lives, like Elijah did, where we, f- we feel like the bottom has dropped out, where there's nothing more we can do, where there, there's no hope. And we'd rather just say, I'm done. Instead of saying, wow, throwing up our hands and saying, why? Elijah, that's where he was at. That's where he was. He stood in that cave or probably knelt in that cave and he asked those questions. I've been faithful to you, God. I've done what you've told me to do, but why? Why am I again running for my life? Why am I again the one who they're going to kill? In a still whisper, a soft whisper, God came to him. In a still, quiet voice, God came to Elijah and reassured him that he was still in control. He even laid out for him his plan, something that we long for in our own lives, don't we? We wish that God would show us, well, what is next? What's the next step? That's exactly what he did for Elijah in that still whisper. Some folks say, though, that first Elijah had to get the trouble, the turbulence out of his life. Some commentators, as they comment on 1 Kings chapter 19, say that the storms, the the wind and the earthquake, the fire, that that was all significant of, of Elijah's turbulent heart. That all those things had to be taken out of his heart before he could hear that soft whisper of God speaking to him. And while I don't completely agree with those commentators, I think that they might be on to something there. Because how often does the turbulence in our own hearts get in the way of hearing that soft, still whisper of God? How often does the turbulence in our, turbulence in our own lives develop an attitude that we are alone? Too often. Too often the noise, too often that loud wind of pain, of struggle, of hurt is so loud beating in our ears that we can't hear that soft voice of God that comforting voice of God, that reassurance that He is with us, that He is the one in control. So often, though, we fall into those pits of despair that we can't even see the light. We stand right beside Elijah or fall right beside Elijah, feeling as if all is hopeless, refusing to let go. But it's in that moment when we let go that we realize how firmly God has us, 
how firmly His grasp is on us and how He is the only one who can pull us through these storms and pull us out of the pit of despair. It is only through, the, through that realization that we real, it is only through that realization that we see the great power of God, His great love for us, and ultimately His salvation for us. Because so often we are taught by our world, by our country, by even sometimes our parents, that if we can't do it ourselves, well, it's not worth doing that. We need to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps, that we need to be able to be the ones who claw our way out of the pit of despair. Well, that is not what God says. That is not who we are designed to be. That is a sinful attitude. That is a prideful attitude, an attitude that I can do it, that I'm in control, and we are not. We aren't. We aren't the ones who can pull ourselves out of the pit of despair. It is only God who can. We are not the ones who can pull ourselves out of the pit of sin because we have been corrupted by our sin. We have been destroyed by our sin, even to the point of we have been slain by our sin, put to death by it. And only God can pull us out, could pull us out of that pit of sin, that pit of Sheol of death. Only God, through His precious death on the cross, could be the one who could take our place. Only He is the one who could rescue us. And on the cross, that is what He did. On the cross, He was, is, and ever will be our salvation to pull us out of those pits of despair, those, that pit of sin, and rescue us, giving us the hope, the hope of our salvation. And when we realize that it's not who we are or what we've done, it kind of makes us say, wow. It kind of makes us say, wow, because we look at it and we see just to what ends God was willing to go for us. Just how far he was willing to reach for you. And we say, wow. I have a Savior, a God who loves me, who cares for me more than anything else. I have a God and a Savior who cares enough for me to come down to this earth and rescue me. We're not meant to face these trials alone. We're not meant to face these storms alone. But we're meant to hear that that soft whisper of our God as He walks with us. There's a quote from a song that I like. Sometimes the storms in our lives... And the quote from the song goes a little like this. Sometimes God calms the storms in our lives. Sometimes God allows the storms to rage and calms his children. That's a little bit of a paraphrase, but in that phrase we see, that paraphrase we see how true it is that sometimes as we go through this life, the Lord just takes away those storms. He washes them away so that we might go forward, so that we might know the power of his mercy. But sometimes he allows us to go through those storms. Sometimes as we go through those storms, there's a reason for it. It's that we might grow more dependent on him. So that we might grow stronger in our faith in him. So that we might clutch onto him and know that he will never let go of us. And know that he never has let go of us. No matter what fire or earthquakes no matter what winds sweep and tear the rocks of our lives, the foundations that we thought were so sure around us, no matter what they are, God is still greater. He is still our assurance. And the sad thing is, so many people do not have that assurance. So many people have heard the lies of the world, the false truths that are out there, So many people try to build a firm foundation in their lives, but are doing so on sand. And so many people are drowning in despair. And we, the people of God, we have those words, those words of God to them, those words that can bring healing to their despair, those words that can bring healing to their hearts. Not our words, but God's word to them. God's words of healing. God's words of strength. But those people will not hear if we do not tell them. Sometimes those people are right there next to you in the pew next to you. 
Sometimes it's the people who are right here among us that need to hear that we have been through a storm and as they face that storm that God brought us through and He can bring them through. Sometimes it's the people outside the door there. The people in our lives who don't know Him, have no clue what His love is. God gives us that blessing, that opportunity then as He's rescued us to put out that hand to lift up others. To care for them as He's cared for us. To witness to them as as He has shown us His glory. So that we, as we have said, wow, God is mighty to save. God is in control. They too might say, wow, and be overwhelmed by what God is doing. It's my prayer that as you go through the pits and the valleys of this life, as you face the despair, that you might know that God is reaching out and that you might listen for that soft whisper. That soft whisper that I love you and you are my own. Amen. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the example of Elijah, for his faithfulness to you, that he's, even as he faced trials, that even as he felt like he was alone, that he continued to be your prophet, a man who followed your ways, who followed your commands. We pray, Lord, that as, even as we face the trials of our lives, even as we feel as though we are drowning in our despair, in our loss, that we would know that you firmly hold on to us, that you never let go, that you never, ever let go of us. Help us to always hold to that and to be amazed and to be overwhelmed by that. Help us to be overwhelmed to the point that we say, wow, Lord, thank you. Thank you again that you have not reached in only into my life to rescue me from, from the death of this world, but that you have reached into my life to rescue me from the death of the world that is to come, that you have done so by the precious gift of your Son, Christ Jesus, that he has reached out from the cross for each one of us so that we might have the hope of salvation. And we might say, wow, thank you, Lord. And so in all things, we do give thanks to you through your Son, Christ Jesus, our Lord, our Savior. Amen.